It's just past 15 GMT and we start in Pakistan, where authorities say they will follow court orders and arrest former Prime Minister Imran Khan for failing to show up in court on Monday. Well, hundreds of protesters are outside his residence in Lahore and have fought with police. Security forces fired tear gas and water cannon to disperse the crowds, but the supporters are staying put. Pakistan's interior minister has promised to arrest Khan and take him to court by the end of the day. Khan is facing dozens of charges, including corruption. Police has arrived at my residence to arrest me, and they think if I will be arrested and imprisoned, then the nation will sleep. But you all should prove them wrong. You have to prove you're a living nation and the followers of Prophet Muhammad. You have to fight for your right and for the real freedom. You have to come out and have to struggle. I'm fighting your fight. I have struggled all my life and will continue to fight. But if they put me behind bars or kill me, then you have to prove that without me, this nation will struggle for freedom. Well, let's go to our correspondent, Kamal Haider. He is joining us live from Islamabad, the determined, determined as ever, former leader Imran Khan speaking there, Kamal. But we're hearing that special paramilitary forces, meanwhile, have been ordered to his house. This is also a determined government to arrest the former prime minister. Indeed, the government has made no secret of the fact the country's interior minister now saying that he will be arrested, it is now imminent, and we have been getting some reports that it may have already taken place, but we cannot confirm that yet. Now, earlier in the day, the police came in in strength. Uh, they brought in water cannons, they brought in tear gas, there were scuffles with Imran Khan supporters. The interior minister then ordered the paramilitary forces uh, to beef up the police. One of the police officers who had gone to arrest Imran Khan from Islamabad was said to have been injured as a result of the stone throwing by the protesters. And after that, uh, the, uh, direct, uh, the deputy uh, inspector general of police was given the task of uh, arresting Imran Khan. They have now put a siege around his house. Imran Khan supporters, of course, are there. Imran Khan himself has now announced a six-member emergency committee of the leadership which will run the party affairs in his absence in case he is arrested, the likelihood of that being, being very high. Now, we are also finding out that there's been a strong reaction in the southern port city of Karachi. Uh, there have been protests in other cities of the Punjab, a main highway from Chaman to Quetta. This is uh, one of the roads that links uh, onwards to Afghanistan has been blocked by protesters and also protests now taking place uh, near Islamabad and even in the twin city of Rawalpindi, which is uh, just uh, a few kilometers from here. So indeed a strong reaction. Yeah. The government showing its determination that, he, that it will arrest Imran Khan. However, the charges against him, and it should not be forgotten that there are 77 cases that have been brought against Imran Khan. The government in power has tried every trick in the book to try to nail him. The higher courts, of course, have given him relief because of the frivolous charges. Many uh, yeah. jurists and legal experts believe that those charges will not hold in a court of law. And, of course, now supporters coming out and the situation indeed quite tense. And really interesting that the protests are taking place in places other than Lahore now. You mentioned the many charges that he's facing, but his arrest, um, the attempt to arrest him, is over failing to show up to court in one particular case, isn't it, Kamal? Can you explain what that is? Uh, yes, that particular case uh, uh, pertains to what is locally known as the Tosha Khana. The Tosha Khana is a state repository Every time uh, a foreign uh, head of state comes to Pakistan or if a Pakistani heads of state go overseas, they receive expensive gifts. These are then uh, put in a repository, which is known as the Tosha Khana. Imran Khan was accused of taking one of the watches from that Tosha Khana, although he made a rule that, it would be, that he raised the price on it to 50 percent of the value of the goods, and he had bought a watch which was presented by the Saudi crown prince. He then sold that, and 
uh, recently a list came out which showed all the benefactors of the state gifts. Uh, former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif received several gifts uh, which he took for himself without paying the money. Many other politicians, senior bureaucrats are also involved in taking those expensive gifts at a pittance uh, when it should be uh, deposited in the straight, uh, state treasury. So the charges, of course, seem to be based on political vendetta, according to many political experts here. The people, of course, believe that Imran Khan has emerged as the most popular political leader in the country, that the government is looking for an excuse to delay the elections and are using these tactics in order to pressurize him. That is Kamal Hadha joining us uh, with the very latest live in Islamabad. Thank you for that, Kamal. Well, let's get more on this. We're joined now by Arifa Noor, political analyst and columnist for the Dawn News website, and she's joining us on Skype from Islamabad. Thank you very much for your time. So, police breaking up a gathering of Khan supporters we saw last week, banning large gatherings, didn't deter people from congregating outside Mr Khan's home today. Is the government action against Imran Khan doing anything to deter support, or is it, in fact, bolstering it? Um, I think the government is uh, perhaps uh, using this uh, in a way to also keep uh, uh, Imran Khan, who is obviously a very popular leader at the moment, from focusing on the election uh, too much, uh, because he's constantly, as your correspondent just pointed out, he is constantly being called to the various courts, and there's, there are these constant fears over his arrests or what, uh, you know, the courts are issuing arrest warrants. So, to some extent, of course, uh, you know, the government does want to arrest him. They do want to, uh, you know, be able to uh, control his movements. But it is also a way of trying to keep him distracted. And this is not the first time this tactic has been used. Uh, if you look at Pakistan's history, you will see this at work time and again, that every mm -hmm. time uh, there is a leader who's at loggerheads or, you know, on, on a crash course uh, um, with the establishment, there are lots of cases against him. And the idea also is to keep them impairing, busy with their court appearances, mm -hmm. which then gives them very little room for other activities. So does that give us an idea, then, of what you make of the charges against Imran Khan? He and legal experts say they're frivolous. Do you agree? Um, I, I suppose it could be said in a way that, uh, you know, especially in Pakistan, again, this is the history that when you do have uh, such charges against uh, political leaders at a certain time in their careers, uh, they are what we call politically motivated cases. Mm -hmm. Even if there is some to them, the fact that they have been initiated is due to politics, and whenever they do end, it is also due to the politics rather than the merit of the case itself. And it's not just uh, political cases or rather legal cases that politicians in Pakistan are used to facing. It, Khan has survived an assassination attempt on his life and he keeps warning that there is a threat to his life. And this is a country that's also no stranger to political leaders being killed. Is he being provided adequate security? Uh, this is a difficult question. Um, uh, because it's a very subjective view of what security can be or should be, as you yourself said, that, you know, Pakistan's political history is full of uh, violent events. And we uh, very recently, uh, at least in our political memory, have lost Benazir Bhutto to uh, an assassination attack. And Imran Khan himself has also uh, been targeted once, and he still claims that he hasn't recovered fully from that attack. So, um, it, you know, uh, security is a difficult thing uh, to provide in Pakistan to anyone or any institution. As you can see, we're constantly uh, witnessing uh, terrorist attacks these days. And then, um, obviously, this is also a question of how do you provide uh, security to a political leader at the time of an, e of an election? when his, um, you know, um, his schedule is perhaps full of interaction with the people. Yeah. Ca election campaigns in Pakistan tend to be in very, uh, you know, the kind of uh, uh, environment in which they take place. Security is not very easy to ensure. No, and, of course, he's saying that he's not actually being allowed to hold any 
um, election or campaign rallies. We'll have to leave it there for now. Arifa Noor, thank you very much for your insights on this. We do appreciate it. That is Arifa Noor live for us in Islamabad. Thank you.